nobody asks you how many GCSEs you've got or yeah. how many A-levels you've got or whether you've done a degree. Those questions don't exist in our interview panel. It's, it's a state of mind. Service Charge. Welcome to Service Charge, the show that gives you food for thought and a taste of success. The show where I, Zymaka, have lunch with entrepreneurs, creatives, and movers and shakers. I find out about their entry into their industries, their day to day challenges, and ultimately whether it's all worth it. In this episode, I'll be joined by Ben Warner. Ben is the founder of Benugo, a catering company with over a hundred restaurants, dining spaces and cafes across the UK. And today he met me at the Benugo Bar and Kitchen in the Warwick Arts Centre to discuss founding Benugo 25 years ago, to tell me about working as an undercover boss and to play our very own service charge game. Uh, hi Ben, thanks for being here. Um, You're welcome. I heard you actually get kind of nervous in your own uh, restaurants or cafes, maybe because of like perfectionism. Um, but what do you think of the food today? Uh, well, first of all, uh, so thank you, thank you for doing this interview. It's great, good fun. And we're in Warwick University, which is uh, we opened this cafe about two years ago now, and it's been a huge success, not only for the students, but we're in the Performing Arts Centre, mm -hmm. which attracts the world's best performances. So it's wonderful to be here. The food's great. We've got a chicken Caesar salad and we've got a vegetable laxa here today. So, uh, but the menu is based around local providence, uh, great tasting, simple food. Mm -hmm. Lots of pizzas as well for the students. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think we should kind of dig yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, dig in, dig in. So we've got the chicken, free range chicken uh, with bacon and uh, croutons in there and a Caesar dressing. So, uh, wonderful. So I wanted to start by kind of talking about the beginnings. So even before Benugo started, um, in terms of like when you were at school, did you have ideas of being an entrepreneur or being in the food business? You know, I, I, I did, I did. So, yeah, retracking slightly, uh, way before Benugo, I was a, 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 a very poor performer at school. So okay. that's why I love being at Warwick University. Finally, I feel like a student, which I missed <laughs> yeah. out on. <laughs> yeah. So I left school at 16. I, 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 I never actually managed to, to, to get through my uh, GCSEs or O-levels as they were mm -hmm. then. And I didn't have a particular interest in academia, um, although I do now, but, but not mm -hmm. back then. Um, and, but I, also, I, I always loved cooking. So, um, and in those days, cooking was, was not considered to be a much of a career, but of course nowadays it is, and mm -hmm. uh, it's not just a career, but it, it, it's something that people aspire to do, and uh, we have some of the most fantastic chefs in the world in the UK. Um, but back then we didn't, and um, I was very lucky that I got an apprenticeship with a chap called Raymond Blanc, who's a famous French chef, and did a year or two in his... Uh, Patisserie uh, in Oxford, uh, where I was born and brought up, and um, and then from then on in, I made my career of, of cooking and, and, and uh, did a one year's cooking course and cooked on some of the big super yachts in the south of France. Had a great time, and and then finally came back to London and decided to to, to do something for myself. And I actually started by making sandwiches. And, and uh, at the flat I was living in and selling them out of baskets to city institutions. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then one thing led on to another and uh, I was one of the first uh, franchisees in Pret-a-Manger. So I had two Pret shops, which, which was my two stores. But you know, it wasn't mine, although they were owned by me. You know, it was very governed by, by, by the way Pret wanted to do things, which was fantastic, by the way. I'm a massive admirer. A Pret is a, it's a wonderful brand and, and one that I was uh, honoured to be part of, particularly in the early days. Um, anyway, we had this idea, me and my brother, to do to, to a, 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 a sort of a, a deli style operation. So Pret was all around pre packed products and we wanted yeah. to do sort of counters full of uh, abundant, delicious, fresh food and uh, served in the way you want it. So if you didn't want mayonnaise in your sandwich, you didn't have to have it. 
uh, if you wanted tomatoes, you could have tomatoes. Mm-hmm. So, so it was a choice was yours. And, and Benugo was born. So Benugo is Ben and Hugo. So Hugo is my brother. And, yeah. uh, and that's hence the name. And you know, we started. It's almost 25 years ago. Almost next month will be wow. 25 years exactly. 1998. I don't even know when the internet was around then. Certainly before you were born. <laughs> On service drive, you like to kind of give back to our guests as well. So I heard that you're into rowing. Um, mm. So I actually have something for you. Oh. Hopefully you don't own this already, but you let me oh, know. What a treat. So it's a book called The Boys in the Boat. Mm. Um, Thank you so much. I don't have this book, but I okay. know of it. Okay, yeah, fair. Thank you so much. That's, that's Fantastic. Oh, real treat. Well, I hear they're actually going to make a film um, of the book later mm. this year, George Clooney. So, oh yeah, I'll really? be looking out for it. George Clooney? He's going to be directing, yeah. Really? Fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank yes. you so much. I want to know more about your mindset when you were starting the new home. Like, what did you think success would look like for you then? Could you picture what we have now? You know, in honest truth, well, there are a couple of things there. I mean, first of all, I, 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 I never thought about money, and it's a mistake, I think, when you go into business to be focused on money. I think, uh, you know, if your business is successful, generally, you can make money out of it and you can be successful in money terms. Um, but food is a labour of love, it's, it's, it's not about trying to, trying to make a few extra quid here and there. And, so we went into it um, with the idea of just being really good. And, um, and in honest truth, no one is more surprised than I am to where it is okay. today. So, you know, Benigo started with zero 25 years ago. Pre-COVID, we got to about 140 million and then dropped back a bit because of COVID and closing various things. But we're now back up there again. So. Um, no, I can I can honestly say that I'm I, I, I you know and, and I'd love to say it was all me, but it's not. It's not. I'm lucky enough to have my name over the door, but I um, we employ a, an amazing group of people. I assume when you first started, you were kind of doing all the roles. So. Yeah, of course. I mean, I was working. I mean, I I, I think I've always been a hard worker. I mean, yeah. It's just just the way I am. I, I've, I've, I've always done what I need to do uh, to make things work. But in the early days, uh, Hugo and I did absolutely everything. You know, we, in the night times, we cooked the cakes and we cooked the fillings. And in the mornings, we served the coffee, made the coffee uh, and served the sandwiches. And then in the afternoons, after we were closed, we swept the floor and mopped the floor and cleaned the floor. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, long hours, long hours, um, very rewarding though. How has that role sort of changed now? Do you just oversee everything? Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I can't be, you know, we, we have 120 different yeah. sites, so I, I've sort of gone slightly beyond sweeping the floor, but you know, I'm, I, I certainly wouldn't mind doing that <laughs> job. I can't do any job that's necessary. I can still make coffee. Yeah. Um, I can still work behind the till. Um, I had a recent episode in the Barbican where we were very short staffed. I walked in there and I realised we were very short staffed. I quickly got onto the coffee machine, much to our team's uh, dismay, <laughs> seeing me on the coffee machine. And an American guy came in and ordered a quite a difficult coffee. And, and I said to him, Look, I'll try and make it for you, but it's my first day here. I can't <laughs> make it for you. So I made it for him and gave it to him. I said, it's my first day though, and, and, and yeah. he, he, he came back about 10 minutes later and he said to our manager, you know what, that was a really good coffee, you've got to employ this guy, yeah, yeah, you've got to employ <laughs> this guy. I said, really, that really makes you feel good. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I think you've got to give him the job. <laughs> I'm really great. I said, I've got a job, I've got a job as a coffee maker. In terms of when you were first like expanding, um, I read that you had to like remortgage your house and things like this. So, like, how much of a risk kind of were you taking? It's a risk that, that luckily I was I was I was um, single with no dependents. Right? Okay. It's probably a risk I would never take now because I've got three kids and a wife, but I don't need to. So, yeah, I mean, look, you know, business is 
you know, business is, is risky, you know, it's risky. And there have been many occasions in Benugo where we, we're on the line, you know, we've been on the line, not, not now, but right back then, you know, it was sometimes difficult to pay the staff, you know, yeah. and I, I and Hugo um, are less than the team members. Mm -hmm. You know, we were paying ourselves virtually nothing in the first two years and living off of our savings and a remortgaged house and, and all those sorts of things. Um, it's, um, you know, any business is a, is a tough business to start. Um, and, but particularly a food business is even tougher. You, you have to be good, you have to be really good because customers are very discerning and you know they 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 are fickle as well so um you know you were the celebration last week and maybe you won't be in this week because yeah. you took your eye off the ball and your salad was slightly less fresh than it should have been and you used the lettuce which you shouldn't have done and it was a bit stale and the bread wasn't as fresh as you wanted it to be and suddenly a new glossy sandwich bar is open next to you and they're doing things better so in this business is very changing it's always changing we pause this broadcast for an advert about our sponsor you're lindsay right i'm charlie i solve problems i mean i know people who can solve problems is that your food you mind if i So Lindsay, I hear you're a student, is that correct? How are you finding, finding accommodation next year? Is it difficult? Do you wish the process could just be made a bit easier? Well, my friends at Handles Property, they can help you out. So Handles Property is an estate agent with properties in Warwick, Leamington Spa and Kenilworth. And they're used to dealing with students like you. All you need to do is visit their website, handlesproperty.co.uk or you can give them a call. That's at 0192-6354-400. They'll handle it. Now back to the regularly scheduled program. I think the thing that sets Benugo apart is the amount of public spaces it's in. A lot of the collaborations with like financial institutions as well. Um, so I've been reading quite a lot about business and that, that napkin. I think it was Pixar, they wrote uh, the first ideas for Finding Nemo on a napkin. Yeah. But uh, could you just talk about uh, the napkin and its significance with the Lehman Brothers uh, in 2000? So, I mean, Lehman Brothers, I mean, sadly Lehman Brothers are no longer with us, um, but they were our first probably big opportunity. And, mm -hmm. and what I loved about Lehman Brothers, they always had this can-do attitude. Okay. And probably we sent them under in the end, but, <laughs> but they were brilliant to work with, absolutely brilliant to work with. And um, it actually came about that we, we had two shops at the time, okay. and it was in 2001, 2000, there were some issues in the city where they had to close the offices. And a chap called Paul Gardner, who ran uh, all of the infrastructure within Lehman Brothers, popped his head around the corner and said, I'm going to need 500 sandwiches um, delivered in three hours to do it. And, and we said, yeah, of course we can do it. And ran around to Tesco's and bought 40 loads of bread and, and mm -hmm. started making sandwiches and delivered them. And they were so impressed that they asked us to go and look at their staff catering. And it was something that we knew nothing about, and, and, but it wasn't very good. So we said, look, what we can do is we can open what we have on the high street in the workplace. And you know the great thing about that, it was music to the, to, to, to the particularly the finance directors, yeah. because previous to us doing that, they used to pay people to come in and do this job for them. So they would open these great big staff canteens and they would pay the, what they used to call the contract caterer to come in and, and cook food uh, for the staff. Um, what we said is, hang on, we don't need a huge footprint. We just need a small footprint to open a small cafe we're going to serve the food that people actually want to eat and what they go out to get, because half of your, or ninety percent of your people are going out every day to buy their lunch. We yeah. can serve it in the office. Well, not only will we not charge you, we will pay you a concession to be there, 
And also, we're going to stop your staff going out. We're going yeah. to keep your staff in the office, so more product productivity from your from your staff because they're not going to go out for lunch every day. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it, love it, love it. We did it, and it absolutely worked. It was a, it was a massive success from day one. And now we're lucky enough to be in Goldman Sachs, we're in UBS, we're in Deutsche Bank, we're in Yamura, mm -hmm. we're in so many of the big the Deloitte's, PwC. The list goes on, and we, we have these lovely cafes in the workplace that are exactly as we have on the high street, serving brilliant homemade food really quickly, keeping your team in the office, and in some cases actually paying to be there. So yeah. it works. One of the unique things about Panugo is that we aren't recognised to be a, a brand, but we always seem to be a homely, small, mm -hmm. bohemian uh, brand, which um, which sort of means we're accepted. You know, you buy one of the big brands in there, and people think, well, it's just another Costa. Yeah. <laughs> or Starbucks. Or, yeah. Nothing wrong with them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I dream about being a Costa or a Starbucks or a Cafe Nero. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess, how do you maintain that sort of culture? Because Benugo is still like growing, there's so many locations. Mm -hmm. So, why do you think people still look at it like that? Um, I, I, look, I, I think there's a number of reasons that, you know, I, I touched on it before, you know, it, it, I'm a great believer in um, for, well, employing super talented people, mm -hmm. but you don't get super talent, talented people unless you're able to offer them an aspiration in life and a career path and uh, training and development that, that will help them progress through their career and, and maybe onto other things as well. So I think it just starts right back at the beginning and, and I'm a great believer is, is the type of people that we employ is no different to the type of people that Starbucks or Prayer as a team member uh, employ. The, the difference is, is once they cross your heart and into your establishment is how you treat them um, and, and what you do with them, and how you encourage them and how you help them to succeed. I want to know what um, your ideas of success are now for maybe the next 25 years at Benugo. Well, you know what? As long as I've got a pulse, right, <laughs> and they want me, yeah. I hope that I'm still here in 20. I'll be 60 next year, so, you know, that'll call me mighty. <laughs> get to me to 85, is that right? Good chance, yeah. 85, <laughs> if I'm 85 and still making sandwiches, I'm not sure, but if I'm alive, yeah. Um, I, I, I've never had a grand ambition. To be honest okay. with you, I've, ne I've never really thought too far ahead. I I've just done what we do, and I think if we continue to do things well, and we continue to uh, employ good people and motivate people in the right ways, I'm sure we'll still be here in 25 years' time, and I hope we'll be doing much the same. Um, on service charge, we usually end with like a sort of game. Um, oh, God. A game. It's not a word game, is it? It is a word game. Oh, is that... oh, no, you can ask me anything you want. I've never been good on words, but <laughs> not a spelling game. <laughs> uh... Oh, go on. Yeah, yeah. My children always laugh at my atrocious spelling. I'm oh, maybe, I, to... maybe I picked the wrong game. Well, go on. Uh, test me and see. Um, so, based on Benugo being like an amalgamation of uh, you and Hugo's yeah. names, yeah. I've got a few anagrams of. <laughs> if that's too. <laughs> go on, carry on. Carry on. Of. Um, like brands that Benugo is associated with, like whether it's a financial institution yeah. or a museum. If you um, say Saks Golden, I'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll give you the um, give you the letters as well, just so you can visualise it. Okay. So the first one is Fib. So F I B. What, um, what institution is that? Uh, British Film Institute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start off easy. <laughs> uh, next one we've got is allergic stints. I think you mentioned it maybe earlier in it. Allergic stints. Uh, <laughs> did I? I don't know. What is it? Uh, Sterling Castle. Oh, Sterling Castle. God almighty. These are getting difficult, really good. By the way, I, I do cook food for a little. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> give me another easy one. <laughs> this one should be easy for a different reason. Yeah. Um, but it's Axe Interwar Wreck. Boring. Yeah, that's it. We end there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Where we're sitting, it's wonderful. <laughs>
Well, thank you so much for coming and um, sharing your story with us. Um, thanks for being a part of Service Charge. Um, a complete pleasure. I, I, I wish you the best of luck with it as well. You've been a great interviewer. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I spoke to Ben of Benugo, one of the Warner Bros. Got me thinking, where would you go? How will it all unfold? Take some big risks. Take some big swings. When you make it, it's all worth it. But you've got to be good in every sense of the word. Have values you observe and pride in what you serve. You've got to put in the work and constantly learn. Then maybe in turn, one day you can earn. Mm -hmm.